and decor. <laughs> and then everyone else in the scene pulls out a giant, very real gun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All of them are Michael Scarn at the exact same time. Yes. <laughs> I can't think of a room full of people I want to have guns less. Than <laughs> yeah, no, I want wait, them well, all to have guns together in a room. I'm fine with that. But no leaving the room. The yeah, room you, is where you, you have. You're in the room forever now. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we've built up too much momentum to jump off that train now. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. What the fuck did we just watch? (laughs) Are you serious? Was this even a movie? (laughs) Zero seconds. I had zero seconds. I win the pool. (laughs) Sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am amazing, Noah. As I said, when I started to watch this movie, hey, guys, I hate to ask extra of you on this busy weekend, but Heath, can I watch you watch this movie? (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember. I blacked out. I don't remember what happened. The only thing that got me through this movie was imagining Heath watching this movie. Exactly. was just watching Heath. Because here's the thing. If I can open the curtain slightly, we've talked about this in like AMAs and stuff. Keith watches these movies almost always more than once, and it takes him sometimes double or triple the amount of time of a movie to watch them, right? Noah and I are like time and a half, sometimes real time. So knowing that this movie took three hours of Ethan Wright's life, I'm going to live an extra 10 years. I'm going to live yeah, to be right. 36. Took way more than right. three hours of my life. I don't remember. I, lo- yeah, I lost all of it. It's gone. Yep. Right. It's going to be a weird episode. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? Okay, I know the title. We watched a <laughs> wrestling Christmas miracle. That's the name of whatever this thing was. That's the name of the document that we're working off yeah. of on our notes. Yes. <laughs> as far as I can tell, it's the story of chat GPT having a stroke and then writing a movie. <laughs> <laughs> It did have the feel of one of those, you know, I made an AI watch 7,000 Hallmark movies and yeah, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love Ken Del Vecchio's other films, but you want to see that humorous side that has slayed everyone who was ever about to get a parking ticket from him, you (laughs) will love this movie. Yeah, no, I recognize what a big statement this is and all. But this was thinly plotted for a Ken Del Vecchio movie. So I feel as though he was pitching the plot for this movie as he was shooting it. Yeah. To the extent that there was a plot to this movie, yeah. <laughs> no, we'll we'll get there. Okay, Karate Christmas Miracle was very coherent. Right. Mm-hmm. It had a plot. Like I followed it. Mm-hmm. I was into it. I wanted a sequel. We didn't get that. We got something else. No. no. We got something else entirely. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being in the best at being the worst at? Uh, yeah, best worst. I have no idea what happened. I don't know. Yeah. I don't <laughs> know what happened in the thing I watched. I watched mm-hmm. it for a long time. Mm-hmm. Not only do I not know what happened in this movie, I don't know what happens within the movie in this movie. Yeah, there, right. There's a movie in it. I, I, have, I couldn't <laughs> tell when we were in and out of that. No. Well, so that's where my best worst was going to be, right? Best worst cinematic recycling. So Ken Del Vecchio is a huge fan of taking clips from his other movies where he got semi-famous people as as cameos and putting them in new movies so he can say that semi-famous person is in this movie, Mm -hmm. right? So this movie has Gilbert Gottfried. It's got Martin Cove. It's got Michael Winslow. It's got J.J. Walker, Jimmy Walker. But they're all like, there's an internal movie within the movie that people keep watching that has those people in it. That is clips. I'm, I'm guessing of like an aborted film project of Ken Del Vecchio's from years ago or whatever. And the movie never really tells you when you move in and out of that. So like as bizarre and silly as this movie is, it's made all the more difficult by the random interjections of some other fucking movie. 
Yes. And 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 to be clear, the meta narrative is that a child made the movie, but the movie, the aborted movie, which is ironic because it's a Del Vecchio movie, but the aborted movie is very clearly like a gross out horror psychosexual film. So the notion that an 11 year old wrote it as a comedy thing is very strange. <laughs> it really is. It's, um, yes. <laughs> it seems scientifically designed to drive Heath mad yep. is what I'm saying. And of course, I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best, best trivia. And podcast listener, I have blued this out in our notes so as not to spoil it for my co-hosts. Here is from the IMDb trivia for this film. Robert Zadar was originally cast, but he had to leave the production when his pet mini horse what? was attacked by three pit bulls. <laughs> yes. What? I <laughs> All right. Well, describing this movie is going to be a lot like telling somebody about a dream you had when you were on peyote. So we need to pause for a second to strategize. But we'll be back in a flash with all the random joke attempts that are a wrestling Christmas miracle. Hey, it's me, Ken Del Vecchio, modern renaissance man and movie superstar. I know what you're thinking as you watch this movie. Wow, how can I, an ordinary man or woman, get into the shape of an Olympic athlete and champion wrestler like Ken Del Vecchio? That's right, I'm not actually an Olympian, although I can see where your confusion would come from. Anyway, the answer is that you can't, but you can get close with FitBod. The FitBot app creates a workout routine that adapts as you improve and uses the equipment you already have so you can reach the next level without burning through all your free time or cash. It's true. I tried out the app when they became a sponsor, and I love how they can work around my schedule and they never stick me with the same boring workout. Plus, a full year of FitBod is less than the cost of a single session with a personal trainer. Podcaster Heath Enright, yep. want to be in my next movie? I would literally rather die. No, I would not. That's die. what Gilbert Gottfried said. Mm -hmm. Join FitBot today and build a routine that grows with you without slimming down your wallet. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app for free at fitbot.me slash gam. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash gam. How'd you get Gilbert Gottfried in the first place? Cameo is a desperate place, Heath Enright. A desperate, desolate place. Desperate place, yep. And then I'm going to be like, waka waka. Oh, that was a All classic. Right. Here he is. Here he is. Everybody secure your funny bones. Oh, oh, man. You secure your funny bone. You whoa, do it. Whoa, battle of the funny titans here. Can I tag in? Oh, you sure can. Okay, guys, but seriously, 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 seriously. <laughs> let's get started because I cannot wait to be the comic relief. Of this movie. Wait, what? wait, wait, what? Oh. No, no. I thought I was the comic relief for this movie. Well, I, th I'm I thought I bits. was the. I was. I thought I was going to be the comic relief. Oh man, man, what a what a misunderstanding, guys. Okay, guys, get it. We can all be the comic relief. We, we can. Sure. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll just all be making our wackiest jokes all the time, just constantly throughout <gasps> the movie at every conceivable moment. Oh. guys, guys. I think this movie. Is gonna be amazing. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. My wife. My wife. <laughs> my wife. My my wife. My wife. My wife. My wife. My wife. My wife. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're gonna start things off with some home video of Ken's kids' wrestling matches. Yeah, <laughs> with a bunch of people blurred out like they're in witness yeah. protection because they were in a Ken Del Vecchio movie. <laughs> okay, now, uh, look, that is funny, but uh, by the same token, is there anything more horrifying than the knowledge that your child was in a Ken Del Vecchio film without consent? Yeah, Rough. no, no, I get it. I get mm -hmm. it, yeah. And uh, hey, credit where credit's due, little mini Del Vecchio, pretty good wrestler. Yeah! You know, she's... She he seems to be doing fine. Kicking ass. I have no idea. I don't know. It just seems like people just like jump around in a little singlet. And I have no idea how that sport works. But he seems to be yeah. winning. He seems to like land on top at the end of each thing. Yep. I Googled him. I searched him. He's 114 and 14, which is really good. Yeah. This kid could and maybe someday will kick my ass. <laughs> you could tell by the size of his head when he was a baby, honestly. Right, exactly. <laughs> to be fair, the size of the baby, I don't know. That woman, by the way, is gone. So I assume that his mother is dead and that the blonde lady in this movie is now his mother. Well, I feel like, you know, Ken Del Vecchio just 
paid a more attractive woman to pretend to be his wife for the purposes of this movie. But yeah. Possibly. Did the kid do any karate in the first one? Because apparently he's like a real wrestler is what you're saying? Yeah. he's all, And yeah. that was him? Yeah. I remember him not doing any karate in the first one. No, no. Wrestling was obviously his his calling. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So, okay. So, yeah. So, we, we open up a bunch of, on a bunch of wrestling, I guess, what's known in the industry as B-minus role. <laughs> and then this voiceover comes in to like sort of let us know what a kick-ass motherfucker Ken Del Vecchio's kid is. I can't imagine what we're listening to. Yeah, she opens with, if there's a name synonymous with New Jersey children's wrestling, and I wrote in my notes, there's not. There's not. <laughs> I wrote, it's Catholic priest, isn't it? <laughs> you need to not know the answer to that if there is an answer. Yeah. Yep, that's true. <laughs> I think that's important. So, but yeah, she's telling us what a badass Case Gabriel, that's the kid's name in the movie, is at wrestling and how his dad is a Olympian badass, total wrestling kick-ass motherfucker with great physique. Ken Del Vecchio, played by Ken Del... We see him. <laughs> we see his body and face after they say he's an Olympian wrestler. Yes. <laughs> It's so sad because look, here's the thing. Ken was like, I'm going to make a movie about what a great wrestler my kid is, but he's a fucking crazy person. So he was like, so I need to be cooler than my kid. Obviously it is my movie. So I'm the president of fighting. All right, there we go. Movie. Good. Yeah. <laughs> no. And, and then, and, and they're like, you know, why is he such a good wrestler? And this is supposed to be a comedy bit, but it comes to Ken Del Vecchio in a spandex onesie telling us how superior his kids' genetics are. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And then tearing off the top of that onesie for his protein shake commercial that he yep. does shirtless next to his child. Yeah. yeah. That has to be a real thing that they should like that. I know it was supposed to be the characters in this thing. They did that. Oh, yeah. They definitely did that. Yeah, no, that's that hundred percent For real. like some sort of pyramid scheme. For sure. Yeah, no, the kid is like six years younger in that video. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. No, this was very... Re and honestly, it's good to see a preview of how my son will someday look at me at live shows just to sort of get <laughs> out of the way what, the, what that mix yeah. of shame and fear and regret looks like on a child's <laughs> face. Start planting the seed. You're an Olympian, Eli. You're an yeah, Olympian. That's, I, that's what go. I always tell him. I tell Olympian him I invented the Macarena. Taekwondo black belt. Black belt. Yeah. Calls it the daddy dance. So, yeah, and so we get a bunch of wrestling video. Then we see a bunch of video of his kid also being good at football. Now, you know, I, I was I was nice about the wrestling. The, the kid's a defensive end. That's not where they put the talented kids in a, in a, in a game of football. I'm sorry to say it, but, uh, <laughs> but we get some video of that as well. And they're like, he's amazing. He's a tackling machine. I'm watching him not be that. He's definitely not doing that. Nope. He's just like mean Joe Green, they say, which, nope, he's definitely not like that. He's playing his position, and that's about it. Yeah. No, and the, the kid comes out, and he's, he's talking direct to camera at a certain point. He goes, my favorite NFL player ever is mean Joe Green. And I'm like, oh, the guy who's mostly known for spitting on Fran Tarkington and then repeatedly kicking a downed Cleveland opponent in the dick. That guy? Mm -hmm. you, That's the guy. You, why? Why? I mean, it's such a weird reference, right? Because first of all, it's a reference I make all the time, which I found very upsetting. But second of all, why would that be a child's favorite football player? He's trolling through the records of what they like mid 70s to late 80s being like, all right. Yeah, <laughs> he's in that Coke commercial where he takes the Coke from the kid and then throws yeah. him the jersey. Very yeah. throws yeah. Him a famous shirt. moment. Dirty shirt. Also, like, keep in mind that this movie has nothing to do. This is the last time football will ever come up in this film. Yep. Nope. <laughs> so, the announcer even goes, but alas, this movie is about wrestling. Well, not really. Right, because by the end of the credits, he announces that he's done with wrestling, at least for now, at least until the plot of this movie is resolved. Yes. One other question about this opening. Sure. Who was Ken Del Vecchio choking out several times? Just a random clip of Ken Del Vecchio, just with another adult, just like choking some guy out for 10 seconds and then they cut out. And then they do it again, like two or three times. Yeah, that's the brother-in-law mm -hmm. who will later be a character in the movie. He's the comic relief. He's the comic relief. 
of many. He's yeah, one right. Of the He's comic, comic relief A. Yeah, reliviums. Great. So yeah, but then the kid tells the camera now. He says, "I'm taking a 40 day hiatus from wrestling." To make a movie so funny that my friend who's been in a coma three months will hear it and wake up from his coma laughing. Now, I should point out this movie and this podcast are tied in terms of how abruptly that plot point is introduced. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Is that how comas work? Can you hear? Yes. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, you do. You do hear when you're in a coma. Yeah. Yeah. But you do, you probably don't wake up because a movie is funny enough. Although nope, I will that, say, I have a feeling that if Heath ever falls into a coma, if we start playing this movie nearby, he'll wake up to shut it off. So yeah, no, that's <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I don't exactly. think in the movie is going to wake up and be like, "Boo!" Right back into the coma. Yeah, <laughs> so this is well. At least at least the coma is better than this. Yeah, and then okay, and I'm going to do you the favor of telling you what the movie doesn't tell us, which is that the next scene takes place within the movie that Ken Del Vecchio's kid made in the movie. Yes. Right. So we're going to jump from him explaining that he's going to make a movie to him having made the movie. And we're watching that because, but what we see, well, like our experience of this is we cut straight from that to Martin Cove pretending to be a blind man. while Ken Del Vecchio pretends to be a handicapped deaf guy no right yes i think guys i have no fucking are you asking me like i'm gonna know the answer i have no idea what's happening <laughs> and so i was i that was about to be my question is what is the movie within the movie about oh there is no way given what we are shown of this movie to try to figure out what the fuck this was originally <laughs> about eli you're just gonna have to stop the podcast like once every five minutes and be like uh question what? Yeah. And then we're all going to say, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Yep. No, that's fair. Yeah. So, but like in an obvious effort to be as offensive as possible with this opening, Ken Del Vecchio is doing like a slapstick version of sign language. Yeah. If you were trying to start a fight with a deaf guy, this is how you would imitate sign yeah. language. I don't know any sign language. I'm certain there were slurs that happened yeah. in this signing. Well, but the, the the translator that's standing right next to him is translating it into slurs against blind people because Martin Cove is playing a blind guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. No, they, 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 they want to make sure that both sides of the conversation are despicably ableist. So that's what they go with. Mm hmm. But eventually, after a fucking lot of push pins and yarn end up on my corkboard, I figure out that Martin Cove is supposed to be a blind warden at a prison that is a hospital. Again, like I said, it's going to be like explaining a fucking dream to you. And I was really, I was like, and what? No, no, no I got it. I got it. I got it. And Ken Del Vecchio's character is the head of security at that facility that used to be a super FBI agent badass. I want you to know that you gleaning that information from what we watched, I might as well have just dropped toothpicks on the ground and you told me the exact <laughs> number. In terms of this, I, I have no, I believe you. I want you to know I believe you, but I had, I have no. I do believe you too. Also, Gilbert Gottfried works there at this thing that yes. Martin Cove's the warden of. Is that? Yes. Is that what's happening? He is a guard at the hospital prison. Okay. What horrible fucking crime did Gilbert Gottfried do in Northern Jersey with Ken Del Vecchio as his I judge? I don't know. Right? And Martin Cove and Todd Bridges and Jimmy Walker and this whole cast. No. Okay. Look, Martin Cove, I get. <laughs> All right, but Gilbert, got, Gilbert, they're still showing Aladdin on TV, buddy. There's no way you needed this 200 bucks. Oh, man. You didn't need it. Yeah. No, it's pretty fucking sad. But yeah, so then this psychiatrist lady who is an inmate at the hospital prison... I, I feel bad telling the audience about all this shit because none of this matters. This is the movie inside the movie. How do you know any of this? This is Thank insane. you, yes. Okay. I had to do something with my time while I was watching this shit. Did Ken send you an email with the plot of this? Like you secretly <laughs> back end emailed Ken and you were like, Ken, I'm the one who introduces the scenes. And Noah has like a rolling pane of glass in his house right now that he's yeah. just got math marker all over. 
Is your best friend from college and a little girl who never ages the one who described the plot of this movie that you know of? You have to tell us. It's like being a cop. I did a lot of peyote back in the day. That's what it is. <laughs> I speak peyote dream. I speak fluent peyote dream. So, yeah. So, but this inmate psychiatrist lady is being shown around the prison by Gilbert Gottfried, who's also going to like fill us in on Agent Del Vecchio's backstory, sort of. Yeah. Really? Yeah, so, well, sort of. But they, they, they set it up like he's going to, and then they try to knock it down with a joke. He's like, yeah, he was the top field agent in the FBI, and then he was tortured by a crazy serial killer judge. And the inmate lady goes, oh, is that why he's mute and, and in a wheelchair? And he's like, oh, no, that his mother was a prostitute. What? Right. But the word but I, prostitute I is censored. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't think this movie understands how censorship works. Well, they I guess any word that they were afraid would get him dinged by the Dove channel is beeped out. Yeah. Yeah. But again, he's just using this footage so that he can say that Martin Cove and and, and Gilbert Gottfried and, and Michael Winslow, et cetera, were in his movie. So this is what he's got. This is what he's got from his aborted hospital movie or whatever. So now he's trying to beep it out to make it Dove family friendly. I right. Guess. Now it's in a wrestling Christmas miracle, but he'll be damned if he's going to waste that footage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and we kind of gleaned over the he's mute and, and in a wheelchair because his mother was a prostitute. Like the because there is a little weird. Yep, Doesn't seem like the right word. <laughs> but yeah. And then this pauses and we like back out of it and it's the Del Vecchio family watching this movie and, and the three of us are like, oh. <laughs> right. I was like, yeah. V-neck shirt. He's wearing a very deep V-neck. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I can see his penis above the V-neck V. Okay. Keith brings up a very... Ken Del Vecchio is wearing the deepest V-neck V it's shirt terrifying. I've ever seen. And Heath, you brought something up in your notes that I want to support. With my whole heart, which is the it got deeper, right? Thank you. That the V get deeper. I'm <laughs> that certain he changes, that he changed <laughs> into a deeper into a V shirt just to fuck with, with me. Deeper V. Yes, thank you. That's it. I just that's what needed to be said. If the yes. podcast, uh -huh. if the show, if the program ends now, I'll have said my piece. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. So, but this is where we're going to meet Uncle Robert. He's the drunken uncle that's going to be like comic relief. A through the movie and they're all like talking about what a great movie it is and how it's definitely going to cure Charlie's coma with its funniness right yeah also in case anyone was wondering what I was going through emotionally at this point this is where I realized that me and Kendall Vecchio are different sides of the same coin because we both involve ourselves and our families in our comedic shenanigans and think we have cinematic universes around the content we create <laughs> so most of my notes are just me breathing into a paper bag for this scene I'm glad you guys <laughs> thanks for taking on the heavy lifting here that's fun for you yeah don't you live like five minutes from his house? I, so it's, I I have it in my notes later. He eventually is like, hey, here's exactly where I live. It's okay. so much nicer and bigger than your house. I actually wrote down his license plate. He has a Toyota Corolla. <laughs> I won't say the actual plate here, but it's in the movie. So I don't know. I'm yeah. not really doxing. He doxed himself. Yeah. yeah. No, that's true. He might as well pull out my exact wallet, but with $500 more in it. <laughs> At some point in the movie. <laughs> Eli, we're doing so many pranks to this guy in real life, right? So many Christmas okay. pranks. All right. Well, let's let's be super clear. That isn't his house. That was a house that some realtor friend of his let him use. Let's not let's not fuck with that house in particular. Well, there's only there's only one way to find out, and that's the <laughs> fire we start there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so then we learn in the movie that Ken Del Vecchio's character, the Olympian wrestler, has to leave to go wrestle an elephant in the Congo. That's not a sex euphemism. Did I I heard that correctly? Yeah, yeah no, no that's, we all heard it, yeah. Yep. That is what's going on in the movie. I wrote down dad's going to wrestle an elephant and for the rest of the movie I just I kept writing stuff down like that. I was like, I think I heard them say dad's going <laughs> to wrestle an elephant. I don't know how to be, do any noting beyond that. I think I heard that. Yeah. That's my whole notes from the rest of the movie. Yeah. Heath's notes directly after dad's going to wrestle an elephant is I think my COVID came back and gave me brain cancer. <laughs> I'm like 50, 50. <laughs> well, I think that's supposed to be humor, right? But given Ken Del Vecchio's self-image, I don't know. 
right? Yes. Hey, there's a tagline for your movie, Ken, in case you were wondering, a wrestling Christmas miracle <laughs> needs a post colonic. There you go. This movie's like the opposite of El Dopa. Or I don't know what it did to me. It's it's scary. I'm scared. Yeah, so he leaves to go wrestle an elephant for the rest of the movie. Um, so he won't be around. That's the important thing. We've written him out of the script until the very end. And now Uncle Ronald has to take charge of every existing copy of the movie. Now, this is a trope, you know, from shit back in the 80s and 90s and shit like that, right? Like, oh, there's only one copy of our movie. Don't lose it. But it makes no goddamn sense in 2020. Yeah. Right. When it would just be like, I'll email it to you. And then there will it's be infinity <laughs> copies of it. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. I would be 0% surprised to learn that Ken Del Vecchio is just uploading his absolutely giant multi-terabyte films to hard drives and carrying them around (laughs) (laughs) in case his Faraday cage fails. (laughs) He's just got a shed full of wax cylinders of movies somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. No, we're going to get Canticle for Leibowitz with Ken Del Vecchio's movies. (laughs) Everybody, quick, please download hard drives full of good movies or all the future will have is Ken Del Vecchio's films. So, all right, but we've established that Uncle Ronald has the only copy of the movie and the movie is the only thing that can save Coma Charlie. And then we're going to cut to our villains slash comic relief B and C. Mm -hmm. Right, I have them down in my notes as sit-ups and Clorox because when we first meet them, the guy is doing sit-ups while the woman repeatedly practices the line, wow, my whites do look whiter. For like 10 minutes. (laughs) Yeah. I have her as Dolly Hemispheric Partition. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, she says that line so many times. I literally wrote in my notes, am I in hell? I want you to know if I was God, she'd never stop saying that line until he just called us screaming. I, <laughs> I would have to watch this woman do a eugenics commercial over and over in hell. So I guess <laughs> over yes. this all tracks. I, again, we always are like, oh, watch this movie. Don't watch this movie. Watch this movie if only for the mental image of Heath watching this movie <laughs> as you watch this woman do this line over and over and over again. Seven times. I went back and counted. She says that seven different times. Wow, my whites do look whiter. Yeah. Is this a Meisner exercise gone wrong, <laughs> Eli? What's happening? I think it's just her. I think it's supposed to be a comic beat, right? Where yep. it's like, oh, she can't get the line right. Except no one here has a sense. No one involved in this film has a sense of humor. No. So it's just it's just the old people at like some conservative right-wing group all getting together to make a comedy. Right, yeah, and they all use the type of comedy where like like you know what an awkward person has to keep a 3-year-old busy? Yes. Right? It's that comedy <laughs> through the entire fucking movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, we're not skipping any like context or plot in the no. movie. We've described no. everything to you. Yes, this is yeah. what's actually all that's happening. <laughs> so, all right. So then we cut to Case visiting with Christmas Coma Charlie. And I'd love to know how they think comas work because the kid's not in a hospital. He's not hooked to any tubes. <laughs> nope. Nope. Well, they, he asks that, right? He's like, hey, how come he's home? And she's like, oh, well, they couldn't do anything else at the hospital. And I wrote in my notes, so he's just at home filling his bed with liquidy shit. <laughs> Yep. Well, no, because he's not eating either. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> but yeah, so she's going to sing off key. Every time we ever see this actor, she's going to be singing off key at us. Yep. She'll be singing a different Christmas carol every time. She's doing 12 Days of Christmas. We have to go through all the gifts in 12 Days of Christmas off key with her. All of them. Yeah. As Heath has pointed out before on this podcast, listening to bad singing as a comedy beat is still just listening to bad singing. Right. <laughs> There's no rising action. <laughs> no. I do I do enjoy that by the end of this movie, the mo- that's all she does. The mom of yes. the kid who's in the coma. Mm-hmm. She sings some Christmas song at the beginning of a scene like four times. And each time she's more and more angry about being in the movie. And so by the, by the fourth one, she's like, joy of the world. I don't know. Cut. 
Great. Deck the fucking halls. Yeah. <laughs> so. For he's a jolly good fellow. It needs to be public. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but Case is telling Coma Charlie that he made the funniest movie ever. He explains the fucking plot to, to Charlie, basically. And then we cut to that night. Sit-ups and Clorox have now gone to Uncle Ron's house to steal the movie and all the Christmas presents he had stashed in his car. Right. And they dressed up as the Grinch and Cindy Lou Who to do it. Yes. Which seems like a weird sex thing. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was creepy. I thought they were going for like Grinch and like Mrs. Grinch, but I don't think Ooh. there was a Mrs. Grinch, right? No, definitely not. Well, a, she wasn't green. No. So, yeah. Not a Mrs. Grinch. And Cindy Lou Who, just to like, be you know, fair, a racially mixed uh, couple. Yeah, I think no, that's, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair, yeah. Well, Cindy Lou Who is a child, so that's not a an appropriate role play if she's Cindy Lou Who. No, so no I, that's I, fair. Let's, let's, let's go let's Mrs. Grinch. Let's have her be Mrs. Grinch, who just Mrs. happens Grinch. to have, you know, she's white and he's green and they're a mixed race couple. There you go. That are adults. And can I just say, on behalf of our podcast, we're fine with that. Yeah. We are, despite whatever <laughs> Heath has said. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds, now that I say it, but I, I said it, but I, I mean it. It's not a, you, it's not a, I, I, I feel like it. now you're really digging in on it. It might be getting I, worse. Yeah. You're making Loving it so much less Virginia. awkward now. So, <laughs> which is your favorite? No, yeah, we're just we're gonna go right past Jada Pinkett Smith. Okay, yep, me too. <laughs> what? So, and this is of course where Heath has written the the license plate number of this man. <laughs> yeah. Corolla. That's right, Ken Del Vecchio fans. <laughs> yeah. So, if you find a Toyota Corolla in Northern Jersey, <laughs> you might have found. <laughs> Kendall or you found my car. So be again, we are a very, very, it's a thin coin that we are opposite sides of. So. Do what thou will. Yeah. And then, okay. So then we get Uncle Ron having to confess to Mom Del Vecchio that he lost all the presents and the movie and he hadn't even made copies yet. Right. But they, they've decided to have him still be the wacky comedy relief A while he does it. Mm -hmm. So... He's still doing bits and shtick. And little voices. Right. While upsettedly saying, I've lost your son's only hope at waking up his best friend. Yeah. Waka waka. <laughs> yes. No, I wrote my notes here. This is making me miss the cinematic prowess of a Donald James Parker script. But yeah. <gasps> we got to get them together. We got to get them to come on. I, I'm not even talking about World's having to make a movie together. You mean sexually? Yes, sexually. Yeah. I just want to watch them fuck. How much would that cost? Like, not a lot. Not, nah, I we have eleven dollars and that movie is ours for the making. Because here's the thing: their two egos are both entirely based on complimenting themselves in the movie. Mm -hmm. So it would be like a Dwayne the Rock Johnson Vin Diesel situation where yeah. neither of them's allowed to use a fight, lose a fight, but they both have to fight in the movie. Oh, and the voices of the two of them having some sex that would be like uh, Carl the Pug of Pegacorn and Mickey Mouse fucking each other, exactly. voice yeah. wise, which is delightful. <laughs> Yeah, no, obviously. I'm just saying, Noah, in the early days of this podcast, when you were, and I'll go ahead and say it, giving it your all, you did cut together uh, Ray Comfort and Ken Ham having sex. You know, mm -hmm. there's, you have the editing power to make this dream a reality for us. I, I could do that. Yeah. You just run that through <laughs> chat GPT. I feel like it exactly. comes out. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm already on it. I'm already on it. And it killed itself. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> yeah, well, you chat know. GPT will be down when you read this, but it, uh, <laughs> Kefe, it's wow, it's eleven thousand years of insults for <laughs> <laughs> Donald James Parker and Kendall Vecchio. So okay. So then we cut to the the movie nappers. I have them as the movie nappers for the rest of, the, of my notes, checking out all the awesome presents that they stole, and then deciding, hey, we should watch this movie that we stole so that a random clip of it can start playing in the middle of this film. Now, so in this scene, we're going to get a couple other cameos. We're going to see Michael Winslow. He's the sound effects guy from the Police Academy movies. And we're going to see Jimmy Walker. But neither of them would do their catchphrase thing for Ken Delvecchio. He wasn't, he wasn't paying enough for that. No. So, so that you'll know who they are, we keep cutting back <laughs> to the movie nappers watching the movie and saying their catchphrases. Okay. Right? Going like, oh, look at him. Dino might, right? All right. Thank you so much for telling me that, Noah, because I just thought that every time a black actor showed up in this movie, <laughs> they paused it 
so that another <laughs> character could just say a, a different, different black, black actor act- catchphrase? Yeah, you know how black people always be like, what you talking about? Will? Okay, I no, but that, that was Todd Bridges from Different Strokes, who's in it. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. He's Willis. Yeah, that's actually Willis. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. And it's actually Jimmy Walker from Good Times, yeah. Yes, doing the dynamo, and then he does sound effects when Michael Winslow shows up. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. Because literally at the end, <laughs> uh, I was so good. I was like, oh, man, that's racist. That's racist. And then the third guy, he's like, boop. And I was like, okay, what the fuck does this guy think of black people? I'm so confused. Is there a stereotype of doing like a slide whistle noise? When you do black like people that? make slide whistle noises? I live race? in northern Jersey. I would know about that. Hey, we got to get together at the next meeting of racists and really nail this down. <laughs> Which I wouldn't be invited to because of how much I love Mixed interracial marriage. marriage. Jada Pinkett Smith. Nope. <laughs> so now I would explain to you what's going on in the movie in the movie at this point, but that's just going to blow Heath and Eli's fucking minds and it doesn't matter anyway. So I think yeah. we can just <laughs> tell you that those characters are all in it, right? Yeah. Okay. Can I just mention one thing I wrote down? Maybe tell me what happened. You better hope Ajax isn't on top of an elephant was a line that I wrote down. Yes. Yep. Yeah, that was the, so. So Ken Del Vecchio's character's name is Ajax. Ajax. He is Ajax Gabriel. Ajax <laughs> so, Gabriel, the Olympian <laughs> elephant wrestler, and and we'll find out later. Super spy, CIA badass. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> they they wanted to just like write him into a different area of the world for a while. And like the MacGuffin they come up with, they were like, wrestles an elephant. He's an FBI spy. Yes. And that's what's happening. Correct. Yes. Spy elephant wrestling. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Obviously, between the three of us, we don't even know what fucking movie we're watching anymore. So I need to pause long enough to check the episode title. But we'll be back soon with even more of A Wrestling Christmas Miracle. Look at you, Ken Del Vecchio. You've never looked better, you sexy beast. Why, thank you, Ken Del Vecchio. Play your cards right, and you might get lucky with the one and only Ken Del Vecchio tonight. Um, Dad? Ah, Mario, my boy, my star, the second most handsome Del Vecchio man in the world. How are you? Okay, I- I'm good, I'm good. Hey, um, I was wondering if maybe we could just, you know, stop making movies about my interests from now on. What do you mean? A karate Christmas miracle and a wrestling Christmas miracle are some of my best work. Uh, I mean, I guess that's true in the sense that ice has a freezing point or whatever, but... Huh? Uh, no, nothing. Whatever. It, it's just now that I'm a little older and uh, some of these titles, they're kind of embarrassing. Embarrassing? How? I mean, Dad, a staying in the shower too long Christmas miracle? What? That's what you've been up to this year. Or what about this one? The sure do seem to be texting that girl, Caitlin, a lot Christmas miracle. I mean, that's like super specific with the title. Yeah, but we could put Caitlin in the movie. You guys could hang out on the set. <sighs> okay, it's it's fine. It's fine. Just promise me you won't make this last one. That's the most important to me. The realizing my dad actually made a lot of weird psychosexual films before he focused on comedies about me. Christmas miracle. No deal, son. Well, it is the truest one. I wrote a movie about a judge going on a shooting spree while acting as a acting judge. Acting as a judge. Yep, you did that. In real life. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with our movie nappers at a diner getting ready to call in their ransom demands. Yep. Okay. To be clear, the plot of the movie, it's about these two actors named, I think, Kitty Cat and Chuckles. You called them sit-ups and Clorox? Yeah, uh-huh. that's what they call each other, yeah. Okay, them, with a, a Grinch vendetta, they decided to steal the gifts and the movie from a kid who made a movie for his friend in a coma. That's the plot of the movie? Right, and now they're trying to ransom that movie back to the kid's family for a million dollars. Right, but his dad, the famous Olympian Ajax... Vendetta or whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> he's real dad. Gabriel. Ajax Gabriel. Ajax Gabriel isn't there because he's in the Congo wrestling an elephant. Yeah. So yeah, so so we see the movie nappers get ready to make their call. Then we cut over to mom and Uncle Ron. They have to break the news to Case that his movie is missing. Yeah. And so he leaves to give Coma Charlie the bad news and 
just as he leaves, they get the call from the kidnappers. Yes. Now, they're trying... So, I've seen actors do, you know, one-sided phone conversation poorly before. This is the first time I've ever seen an actor, like, forget to do it at all. Yep. (laughs) It is as though someone's never seen a phone conversation, period. Right. Yeah, because, like, he's talking to her on the phone, and then she's describing the conversation that she's having to Uncle Ron without having it. Yep. Is there any chance they were doing this on purpose and they thought that was like a meta joke about the concept of not getting phone calls? (laughs) I'm really trying. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Are you switching sides to Ken Del Vecchio? It feels like you're switching sides. Is this a good movie? (laughs) (laughs) Did I love that? Oh, you've got... Heath has uh, whatever that is. Stockholm Syndrome. Syndrome. He's got Stockholm Syndrome from the movie It was only a matter of time. But yeah, no. So the gag, though, that they are going for on this phone conversation thing is that the that the other guy that sit ups can't do accents very well. And he keeps trying to do it like a German accent. And she thinks it's Italian. And then he'll try to do Italian and she'll think it's British or or something. Right. Right. She, she can't tell what accent he's going for. He can't do the accents he's going for and he can't do the accents he's not going for. Nope. Right. So it's like someone being like, oh, better switch to a different impersonation. Hello, it's me now. Whoa, Borat. That's right. It's me, Borat. (laughs) My wife. (laughs) My wife. (laughs) (laughs) Clearly, this actor was like, I'm going to do all my accents. This is going to be great. I'll do all my accents. And Ken Del Vecchio was like, you could do one. You could do like, do the German. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm doing all of them. No, I got to do all. You already gave the other guy for later in this movie most offensive accent. So I want to do 12 all less of offensive accents. It feels like every 10 minutes, some actor looked at another actor and went, oh, fuck, we're doing funny voices. Yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I've got so much material now. You know what I just re- I just realized that this movie is the movie version of most podcasts. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, but but they want a million dollars to give them back the copy, the hard drive with the movie on it, which Ron, Uncle Ron, thinks is a very reasonable price, and they should just pay the million dollars for it. Yeah. So okay, now we're gonna cut to Coma Charlie's mom. Now she's singing "Joy of the uh, to the World" off key. Right, but she she's not singing it to him anymore, nope. right? The idea was that she was singing to her son, but now she's just just chilling and singing to herself. She's that, worse than that. She's sitting on a fucking hardwood floor, cross legged, eating grapes while singing. Yep, this just, is um, fucking um, surreal. Yeah, <laughs> this is like this is like telling somebody the plot of an eighties video game or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is this really good modern art, maybe? I'm just saying. <laughs> Marina Abramovich, I think, did something very similar. Ooh, actually. It's a little bit derivative, but it's it, there's something there. <laughs> By sitting and watching this movie, we're Maria Abramovich now. Yeah, oh, there you go. <laughs> Lady Gaga's our friend. So, <laughs> so, but Case is upstairs updating Charlie on the plot, right? And now, then we fall back into Case's movie without warning. We are... We're in doctor prison. Yes. But so so clearly, like for, for this movie, the, the aborted film that is the film within the film of Wrestling Christmas Miracle, obviously Ken Del Macchio had an opportunity to shoot in an abandoned hospital. Right. But he had a prison movie, which he then wrote into a, but it's a hospital prison movie. Yeah, and s- since I'm guessing most of the time Ken Del Vecchio has been in prison, it's also been a hospital, and most of the time he's been in the hospital, <laughs> it's also been a prison. Mm-hmm. I can understand why he would be confused. <laughs> but the entire clip that we see is the uh, psychiatrist lady. She walks down a hallway and she says, "Oh, you know," she says to some other doctor inmates, "Oh, hey, I'm a psychiatrist. I can help you with that stress." And and. One of them says, psychiatry's a scam and you ain't a real doctor. And that's the end of the clip. That's, that is the end of the clip. I don't know if it was supposed to be a comedic moment. It wasn't. No. It was not. 
but I don't know if it was supposed to be. Yeah. Okay, my version cut to a commercial for a Tim Allen movie at this point, and I was like, <laughs> oh, this all makes sense. Oh, no. Okay, this is different. I thought I was still in the movie. <laughs> no, this is different. <laughs> I might watch how Christmas with know? the Cranks instead. I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah. So, but that clip ends and we, we cut to the movie nappers watch a kitty cat and, and chuckles watching it. And they explain that they're now going to watch that movie with a big talent scout producer guy or something. Right. And they're all going to be famous. Yeah. So then we cut to mom case and uncle Ron at a bakery. Okay. I go to this bakery all the time. <laughs> Seriously? It's really... A, I, like, I know this bakery super well. It's actually really nice. I feel... I have to believe they would be upset if they knew they were in this movie. You you should really bring it in and show it to them. I yeah. feel like I should be like, hey, I'm just going to give you a timestamp, and I want you guys to do with that whatever you want. <laughs> Is this the place where you keep leaving your business card that says, I will fuck your dad, and they had to get rid of the business card thing? That's my car wash, but I do, they do have a, and I do leave my business card there. Yes, it's true. Okay. <laughs> so, so, okay. So mom, Case, and Uncle Ron are talking about the movie's plot and mom gets a, no, another call from the kidnappers, right? At this point, she puts it on speakerphone and Case recognizes the voice because these two movie nappers were in the movie, right? They're actors that were in the movie that he wrote and directed in this film, right? Right. So now they have that information. Very important. Keep you up on the plot here. <laughs> you say so, no illusions. If you say yeah. so. You lost me like an hour ago. Yeah, yeah no, I, I figured. I figured. And I don't even think we're an hour in. So th then we, we, we cut to the thieves meeting their talent scout at the theater. He's also going to do accents. He's got some voices. Yikes. Comedy relief. D? At this point, he's D? I think so. Is he D? Well, unless, of course, yeah. we want to say Ken Del Vecchio is D, in which case he's E. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and Heath managed to find, like, the square root of negative A there somewhere, too. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Ants started crawling out of his ears. Yeah. <laughs> Darren Ar Aronofsky's filming it in black and white. Yeah. So, but yeah, so they're meeting with a talent scout at his theater. They're going to watch the movie on the big screen. And meanwhile, mom and the uncle are waiting at their house to ambush them when they get home. Yes. So then we cut back into the movie within the movie. We cut back to the Gilbert Gottfried scene. Now, when we last left him off, he was welcoming psychiatrist lady to her new hospital prison. We cut back to him doing that and then being like, bye. Now I would technically in two scenes, even though. You just saw the first half of it in one scene and the second half of it in another. Yeah. I only agreed to be in one scene of the movie. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> now, if you've got all your yarn and pushpins placed correctly, you'll recall that this woman is in hospital jail for the first time. Yeah, so, so psychiatrist inmate is going into her cell for her first night in hospital prison. And as soon as she walks in, she gets splattered with Pie filling, damn it. Okay, and then she kills a CPR dummy with a sledgehammer? Do I Yep. I wrote that down. Did that happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a there's another doctor there, another doctor <laughs> inmate, and he's hitting fruit pies with the sledgehammer and saying that he's doing surgery. Yes. I never honestly I never thought it took talent to pull this sledgehammer bit off. I think I owe Gallagher an apology. After Posthumously, this yeah, this is rip, big, <laughs> big rips to Gallagher for um, making looking, hitting fruit tasteful. Yeah, so but but yeah, then he's like, hey, would you like to hit this watermelon with a sledgehammer? And she's like, sure would. And then she does. And that's the end of that scene. Also, I never realized how like appropriate for the activity the sledgehammer was because she does it with just a regular sledgehammer and it just kind of like caves in the watermelon it doesn't splatter it no it's not interesting to look at right it. yeah right you can see yeah. the actors being like oh that's why he had the big i thought it was gonna just go put some effort into the art <laughs> yeah take it seriously what we're saying is ken del vecchio doesn't try as hard as comedy as <laughs> failed comedian gallagher did yeah, but but we we cut back to the theater. They've just watched the scene. The talent scout thinks it's great, so he would like to do 
an anti-Semitic impression for us about it. Okay, so here's the bit, and the bit gets away from him, and no one's more sympathetic to that than me. <laughs> the bit is, he answers the phone, and he's like, I'm my own assistant. Oh, let me put you on with my partner. Jewish voice, right? But then, with them present, he then calls his assistant and the Jewish partner. So, so it goes from, like, I'm a guy faking to have an assistant to I'm a guy with, like, very, very specific multiple personality disorder. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. This is the meta thing that I was talking about before with the phone call. It's a joke about, it's a commentary, Eli, about <laughs> phone calls in society. Comic relief, square root of negative. Hey, damn it. Yeah. It's all coming together. Also, billionaire money. We do a shot for shot remake of this movie and we have Don Ford, voice of fantasy adventure, do every yes. single voice. Yes. We shoot right. a one man remake a la Funny Games. <laughs> But at the end, we break into Kendo Vecchio's house and murder his family. <laughs> <laughs> also, like that's funny it's games. Classic. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. So and then we we cut to some another attractive woman that De Ken Del Vecchio paid to be near him, brushing her teeth as she listens to the to the radio. Who is Who? this woman? Thank you. Thank you. Heath. Who is this woman? So I'm all right. I'm, I'm going to blow your fucking mind. Remember when he was doing his offensive fake sign language? Yes. This was the translator. OK, but that was what? a lady in the movie. She was this in the movie. So this is the in, in the movie outside of the movie inside the movie. This is the actor that played the translator in Ken Del Vecchio's son's movie, who is also a reporter. In real life. <gasps> this is really good magical realism, the writing. I'm just saying. <laughs> is she the reporter who told us about junior children's wrestling? Uh, she may have, but we only heard that. Oh, no, you're, you're right. She was. She was. We, we, when they cut to do an interview with him, she was the I one take doing it, this the interview. This movie makes perfect fucking sense. This it does. It all, all ties to fucking together. It's uh, you I'm who are good enough for Ken Del Vecchio. It's a lot like Haruki Murakami, if you think about it. Yeah, so. this, is, this is Ken's throne of blood. Okay, so shit's about to get weird. I know, listener, you think shit's already weird. It's about to get fucking weird because on the radio, they cut in with a news report that an unnamed Olympic wrestler from America has overthrown the Congolese government mm -hmm. and has wrestled their president into a cage. Yes. Okay. This, I, I, I'm, I'm baffled. I actually wrote down some things that happened in the movie. Yes. So here's what I think happened. Here's what I have. I think Ken Del Vecchio had some wacky ideas that he didn't have the budget for because it didn't involve his house and his direct family. Mm -hmm. So instead of just not putting that in the movie, the rest of the movie will contain extended radio segments where through sound alone... They, if you will, Bible piece theater their way through Ken Del Vecchio's wackier ideas for this film. Yes. Or he actually shot a bunch of him going to Africa, going to the DRC and wrestling people. And it was a hate crime and he couldn't show all that. <laughs> so he used little clips that don't quite show it. Well, so I feel like if he'd gone to Africa, he might know it a little better. Right. Because it's at this point where they're like. Oh, because the, the radio is telling us the, it's it's explaining the action to us, right? He's in a big fight scene. Ken Del Vecchio is with the evil dictator of the Congo. Right. Right. And the radio says, oh, the president of the Congo is waving a tiger tooth at Ajax, which is a sign that he wants to fight. And I'm like, oh, yes, that famously African animal, the tiger. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, in the trivia for this movie, the IMDb trivia, which, of course, is not as good as the one about the mini horse, it has that as an oopsie, like as a correction. It's like, oh, there aren't any tires in Africa. I was like, oh, that's the mistake. That's the mistake you found, IMDb yeah, that's trivia. That's the factual error in the movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> aren't they going to have alpacas in Yes, yes, Africa exactly, yes. <laughs> yeah, he's going to escape on that famously African animal, the alpaca. The alpaca. <laughs> the alpaca. Okay. So, yeah, but the journalist lady rushes over to the Del Vecchio household. So we cut over there before she's arrived. Mom and Uncle Ron are putting together the million dollar ransom. Yes. 
toothbrusher lady, journalist lady shows up and they have this, they're going for comedy here where the toothbrushing girl is talking about the coup in the Congo, but the mom thinks that she's talking about the movie napping and they're just talking past each other for several minutes. It's quite, it's quite, it's not funny at all. They don't they never do humor. Yes, but the movie, it's the plot of the movie is insane. So no one's making sense, right? right? She's like, he's in the Congo wrestling a rhino. And the other one's like, but the actors have the movie and they're going to sell it to the voice Jew, which just, again, I'm trapped in the middle of not stuck in the middle between clowns on the left of me, jokers to the right. Yes. Yeah. Stuck in the middle with voice Jews. Stuck in the middle with voice <laughs> Jews. <laughs> So, and I have to point this out too, because they're they're filming this very obviously in like a model home for a neighborhood or like a, a house that's been on the market for way too long or something like that. So there's nothing on the walls. There's no decoration. There's just the sparsest little trickle of furniture. So it's like a whole family of heats. They're on a yeah. porn set is yeah. what they are. Yeah. And <laughs> this is there, very- there is cum on the walls and nothing else. That's correct. I have watched people get fucked and fuck each other on every piece of furniture in this movie. That's why everything's white. Okay, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Blends right in. Just off. So, so, okay. But eventually the mom and Uncle Ron learn that the dad is, is overthrowing the government in the Congo. Yes. Actual line from the movie. Ajax wrestling an elephant on Christmas Eve is the least of my concerns. (laughs) Yeah. I wrote down a couple more lines that happened right after that. I thought I was going absolutely insane. That's an actual line. And then General Ringo fled the country riding an alpaca. Yep. And then alpaca. I think Ajax is in the Congo for more than pinning Barnabas the elephant. (laughs) Yep. Real line from the movie. Definitely a sex thing. So meanwhile, the thieves are digging through the dumpster that they told the Del Vecchio family to leave the million dollars in, but damn it, they haven't left a million dollars there. And we should also put out, because like these two people are supposed to be funny, but in a, like a, you know, again, a trying to make a three-year-old laugh kind of way. So they're, they're pretty sure that like not knowing common knowledge equals humor. Yeah. Imagine like a really problematic, not nice teachers attempt to be funny. Yeah. Right. Like a teacher who tells you that the Bible is true and that man lived with dinosaurs and that you need to, if gay people are going to hell, but like what that teacher does on April fool's day is this movie. Like imagine a Nazi guard doing bits for you. Right. And it's exactly. Just a weird <laughs> Whatever feel. a Nazi's version of <laughs> shtick is. Okay. That would explain the Jewish voice that the guy does. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So meanwhile, mom and Uncle Ron go to the thieves' house because they know where they live now because the kid recognized their voice. They're pounding on the door when the movie nappers call them. This is just so unnecessarily convoluted and stupid. But so now they're having a a phone conversation about a new drop-off spot for the money. Mm -hmm. They couldn't just go straight to this because they loved their dumpster shtick so much that they had to keep this in between thing and then like do it again well and and here's how stupid it is is that they could have just had the like the other half of the conversation happen while they were still at the dumpster right like these people show up at their house to find them but they're still at the dumpster looking for the money then it makes at least some amount of fucking sense you can't just call somebody from anywhere you have to go (laughs) to a no we're using cell phones okay okay but guys guys if they cut this scene how would we get their oh so topical 1994 Singapore caning reference? <laughs> Dude, what the fuck was that? They closed that this happens. scene that happens. on a Michael P. Fay joke, which I know statistically about 85% of our audience, nay, living human beings, have no fucking idea what that <laughs> reference yes. is. And again, it's not like this movie was made in like 1999. This was made in 2020. Yeah. Like this was made like during the pandemic, I think. This is what the Del Vecchios did during COVID. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This movie is inches away from playing fucking peekaboo with us at this point. So I'm taking a damn break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. What the fuck is going on? Will Heath ever be okay again? Is this some kind of clever torture that Ken Del Vecchio devised when he realized that we were reviewing his movies? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the exciting conclusion of A Wrestling Christmas Miracle. Are we part of the art right now? 
<laughs> Ooh. <laughs> we look into the mirror. This is genius. Yep. Kendall Vecchio, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and the part with the elephant? Oh my god, the worst. Hey guys, uh, real quick. Oh, uh, what are you what are you guys doing? Oh no, we were just laughing at Kendall Vecchio. <laughs> Dude is so pathetic. <laughs> totally. I mean, can you imagine involving your family in your weird, insane, ego-founded series of films? Oh yeah, so stupid. I mean, he even thinks he has a cinematic universe going. Oh, everybody make sure you pay attention so you get all the references I thought up for me to make about my own creations that nobody saw. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what'd you need to tell us? Oh, just Anna finished the song about Manscaped Man that I asked her to write. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. Hey man, quick thing. No, it's okay. I'm. Ch I actually. I'm just gonna go lie down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You on the floor you, for a you bit. go lie down on the floor. Jesus. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're gonna rejoin the action back at Coma Charlie's house, where Mom is now gonna regale us with an off-key rendition of "Deck the Halls." This is where her heart was just no longer in it. No, I think she's eating decorative fruit in this scene. Like, I don't think it's real <laughs> fruit at this point. No, this is deck to haul. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but when we last left mom and uncle Ron, they weren't sure where case was and they'd gotten it in their head that perhaps the movie nappers kidnapped him. No real reason for that. No. Right. They just thought that, but he wasn't kidnapped. He was telling the plot to coma Charlie some more. Yeah. And then suddenly with no transitional material or establishing shots or anything, Case and mom are in mom's bedroom talking about Superman and about how she's Superman too when you think about it. This is the most porn set of all the spots too. <laughs> yes, by the way. absolutely. It's the most, yep. It's the most, this, the, they like, you can see the painters drops underneath their feet. It's very, <laughs> very porny. But yeah, this is what happens when a psychopath writes a scene for his psychopath family about what psychopaths they all are. Because she's like, your dad's a Superman, the guy who wrote this film. And he's like, no, you're a Superman. And she's like, more like Superwoman, who's just as strong as Superman, which, by the way, isn't true. Superwoman isn't as strong as Superman. Read a comic book. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm just saying. Also, at one point, they're trying to talk about the thieves. And she says that the thief is like, quote, He's like a slippery hot dog. And then the son replies, yeah, with ketchup and mustard. Yes. I think his name is Wiener. And right. That's the character's the last name is Wiener. Oh. Holy shit. I actually caught that. I'm so proud of myself. Yeah. Okay. But that's just the thing is that they think that that's then a joke. Right. And they also think that with ketchup and mustard is an escalation of that joke. The fact that we have to like reverse engineer the humor in this movie okay. doesn't bode well for us. Honestly, I appreciate it because I just thought they were like, oh, you know that old catchphrase. He's a real slippery hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> With ketchup and mustard. Like nothing else they say in this movie makes fucking sense. No, sure, right. why not that too? Yes. And on a plate, on a table, <laughs> in a house. The bun. And in <laughs> underneath that house is the entire cast of Parasite. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but mom breaks it to case at this point that, you know, it's entirely possible that seeing your movie might not cure your friend Charlie's coma. And case is like, you lack belief in God, you heathen. And she's like, <laughs> oh, well, I guess this is a Christian movie. I guess this totally counts. <laughs> he literally uses his Aquaman powers to talk to his dad across the world. He goes, dad, hear me across the world. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> Dad, I, I know you're wrestling an elephant and like fucking a despot or something, but we need to pray for Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he says, help out even if you can only help with prayer. So again, Christian movie totally counts. Christian, uh, there's nothing worse in the world than the fact that Kendall Vecchio also thinks he's religious, right? There's nothing <laughs> worse than Kendall Vecchio throwing in his Christianity as a fucking afterthought. But also, Jesus. 
Yeah, so the next morning, you know, all Congo, all the time radio announces that <laughs> Ken Del Vecchio is now the hero of the Congo and he's overthrown the despotic government and, and replaced it with a democracy single handedly. Is what he's doing in the movie that he wrote. Right. He did that via wrestling somehow. Yes. <laughs> with his Olympic wrestling. But not in the movie, <laughs> just via radio. He couldn't get the <laughs> right. the Congolese wrestling section's budget together. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Also, General Ringo came back on that alpaca, I guess, because now he's back in the DRC and he's helping yeah. with the freedom. He's the yeah. good guy. Something. He's the Bob Smith. Like, apparently, they didn't want to give the evil dictator a black name, so his name is Bob Smith, the evil dictator that, yeah. that, that he overthrew. So, yeah. So now mom gets another call from the movie nappers. Sit ups is going to eat at us during this conversation, which is lovely. His his scenes weren't unpleasant enough. So now he's going to eat during them. OK, here's very clearly what happens, because at one point she's like, we got all you can eat food when we worked on that movie, which definitely can pitches to people when they agree to be in his film. He's like, <laughs> and we're going to get you a really nice Italian dinner, too. Like, don't <laughs> you do not have to worry about food when you're working on Joker with tiramisu at the there end. There will be unlimited soup, yeah, ju- salad and breadsticks and breadsticks. Yeah. Unlimited. <laughs> as many as I want. Seriously, as though? Some infinite breadsticks. As many as you want. <laughs> OK, I'm a judge. That guy. I'm going to kidnap your child kids, if I don't so. have unlimited breadsticks. <laughs> Trust me, I got this guy off some hard time. He's going to give us all the bread. <laughs> but what happened very clearly is that they, the restaurant, this restaurant, again, the owner, he raped a bunch of kids. Ken Del Vecchio gave him 30 days serve time. And so <laughs> very clearly what happened is that they were like, well, since we're using this base, can we have some pie? And the guy was like, is it in the scene? And they were like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you're right. You're right. <laughs> and juice. <laughs> so they have this weird conversation, which is clearly just Ken Del Vecchio trying to like work out the nuances of his stupid fucking plot through his character's dialogue. Where they're mm-hmm. like, but why would you, if you could sell the movie for more than a million dollars, why would you ransom it to us for it? This doesn't even make sense now. Anyway, so later that day, mom and Uncle Ron are strategizing. This is, by the way, the first time I realized that mom's name was Cassandra, but everybody calls her Cass. So you have Cass and Case in this movie. Fucking dumb. But Uncle Ron is still trying to talk her into going ahead and just paying the million dollars ransom, right? But mom doesn't think that Ajax would roll over so easily. He would do something heroic and awesome. The guy's shirtless ad for a protein shake with his this is confusing. <laughs> He'd fuck an elephant. Nope. Okay. Nope. I don't know. Should we have him back in the movie? I say we keep him in not here. Not yet. So yeah, and Uncle Ron explains he's like, Yeah, you know, look, I know you want to get the police involved here, but if you do that, Charlie, Coma Charlie will never wake up. So we're just all in accepting that the movie it does have coma curing powers, right? Everybody's bought in now on that. Right. So Ron leaves. He's going to figure this out on his own, damn it. And just then mom gets a, a call from Ajax, the elephant wrestler. <laughs> it's, just, it's so crazy to hear you describe the things that are actually <laughs> my job. My job is so dumb sometimes. So dumb. So uh, stay with me. He gets the call from the <laughs> elephant wrestler in the Congo who's overthrowing. <laughs> it's a coup with the FBI. They do operate internationally in this universe. Just go with me. <laughs> then the call is about the ransom on the guy with the Jew, the Jew voice Jew. I used to think that this, the through line of God awful movies was driving Heath insane. And now I think it's just making Noah describe stupider and stupider (laughs) shit. And I honestly, I thought screensaver fish was the nadir. I thought that was it. I thought when we had him do 90 minutes of screensaver fish, (laughs) that was the top one. I would admit. So yeah. So, but the reception is terrible on the phone. So she can't hear what he's saying, but she can explain the entire plot to him in case he wants to just show up and save the day in the final scene, right? Yeah. She also, <laughs> there's this casual mention that Ken Del Vecchio clearly insisted on. He was like, mm-hmm. you're my wife in the real universe too. You have to say that I win at sports betting and you're yes! going to use all the amazing money that I won by betting on sports in Northern New Jersey. Yes! I'm a yes. genius of sports betting. 
I 100% with my full heart believe that Ken Del Vecchio bets on sports. And I have the same concrete faith that he is not up on those bets. And I have that same concrete faith that if you asked him, he says, I'm up a little. I'm up a little bit. It's not huge, but I am up a little bit. You got to buy the dip. <laughs> okay. See, this is what I'm talking about. Stop pointing out that I'm on the other side of the coin of Ken Vecchio. His, his coin has porn mansions. Where's my porn mansion? Uh, and in case this movie was in danger of not being racist enough, I should point out that while he's on the uh, while she's on the phone with him in Africa, she hears some typical Africa sound effects in the background, that being an elephant and gunshots. Yep. The sounds of Africa. I think there was another accent bit, if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, meanwhile, the, the movie nappers are prepping for their big night. It's Christmas Eve, and this is the night that they're going to get their million dollars. Then we get a, a montage of some of the lovely Christmas lights in the nearby neighborhoods to Ken Del Vecchio. Literally just Montclair, New Jersey. It's like five minutes from my fucking house. Yeah, it's really close. We were there. <laughs> so weird. It's so weird. It's creepy. Imagine as fuck. how fucked up it would be to see your house in this, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we might as well walk through the scene and be like, through uh, the scene, <laughs> reviewing a Ken Del Vecchio movie. <laughs> just bending around. Our heads are inside our asses now. I don't know how it yeah, happened. Yes. <laughs> I bet if we, let me throw this out there. If we kidnap Ken Del Vecchio's son, he would try Jesus to Liam Neeson Christ. us rather than calling the cops. <laughs> and I think that's worth it. That's absolutely correct. So, <laughs> therefore, oh, I'm, t I'm, I'm calling <laughs> Andrew right now, people. Okay. So, yeah. Now, we got mom and Uncle Ron getting ready to leave. They've got their million dollars in a, in a duffel bag. Apparently, she just had that much in cash on her. It's the Seton Hall game. I bet on the it's Seton the, Hall game. It's, 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 from the, it's from the protein shakes. <laughs> right. Yeah. So now, but now mom and Ron are meeting with the movie nappers for the, for the handoff at a wrestling mat in the high school gym. Okay. Someone says the, the craziest sentence I've ever heard here. And I really need to talk about it. Okay. He goes, when I spell the word bear, you're going to throw the money. What yeah. the fuck is that? And I don't care that the characters go, why not just do one, two, three, or four, three, two, one. But the fact that it entered any human's brain, like on the spell of bear, we're going to throw it. <laughs> I, I, the humanity is a failed experiment because the result <laughs> of that sentence. Okay, here's, I think, why that happened. They decided we're going to do some amazing homophone bits for the next 45 minutes. <laughs> yep. And the best, they could not think of two homophones other than bear and bear for a while. And they were like, it's gonna, it's gotta be count of bear. That's all we have. We've been here forever yep. trying to think of homophones. Well, so they're pretty damn sure that they've got a good four minutes of shtick here. Right. Yeah. Because, because they go on with that and then he starts to spell it and he's like, wait, wait, B E A R bear or B A R E. And they don't even have the sense to make the joke that, right? They don't even have the sense to have somebody stop him when he gets to B or whatever. They wait until he's done and then they do it. Yeah. But this goes on for fucking ever. Well, get homophones that aren't the exact same number of letters. Then there's like <laughs> at least something there. Right. So this is like Eli writing comedy after he smokes a joint. Right. That this yeah. entire bit is the stuff that Eli throws away in the morning when he sobers up. Yeah, this is this is dip the balloon in icy cold water <laughs> yes. um, made into movie form. What? And then. So, yes. Yeah, so, so they give him the million dollars. But instead of giving the hard drive with the movie on it to the wife and, and Uncle Ron, they give him a sandwich. Oh, what? And then he threatens her. He's like, I have in my possession these three explosive tennis balls that will blow you to smithereens if you if I throw them at you. Well, I, I, sorry, I have to point out what she says when he crosses them. Yes. Uh huh. Because she says, you can't cross us. And then she says my new catchphrase. We come from a wrestling family. That's right. <laughs> and I have no idea what that means. But it's a threat. It's very clearly a I'm threat. I'm saying if anyone starts a fight for me from now on, it's I come from a wrestling family, okay? <laughs> Drive a Dodge Stratus. You don't talk to me like that. <laughs> and then 
bear bear with me here, audience. I'm just going to have to ask you to trust me for the remainder of this sentence. Ken Del Vecchio runs into the room in a wrestling onesie, makes a few funny faces, quacks like a duck trying anal for the first time, and then wrestles sit-ups to the ground. Yep. Is what happens in the movie. <laughs> and I have to point out, like, really wrestles that actor. Like, it's not fight choreography. He really just throws that actor on the ground. Yes. He's very uh -huh. obviously, like, not a fan of it. Right, and sit ups is like, wait, stop, too hard, too hard. Would we'll roll slowly, just roll it. Stop. <laughs> and then everyone else in the scene pulls out a giant, very real gun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All of them are Michael Scarn at the exact same time. Yes. <laughs> I can't think of a room full of people I want to have guns less. Than, yeah, no, I want them want all them. to have guns together in a room. I'm fine <laughs> well, with that. But no leaving the room. The yeah, room you, is where you, you have You're in the room forever now. <laughs> in this wrestling room. I'm cool with it. Yeah, right, right. So, but just so then Ron double crosses all of them. It turns out that this entire movie napping was Ron's plan because he's sick and tired of living in the shadow of Ken Del Vecchio's immeasurable awesomeness. Yep. Right. By the way, the entire time this is going on, Ken Del Vecchio <laughs> has sit-ups in a headlock and mm -hmm. he keeps re-squeezing him like, ow, ow. Like you yeah. can see <laughs> Ken yes. Del Vecchio won't stop real life wrestling this actor. <laughs> also, I think Ken Del Vecchio couldn't help but in real life be like, I like beer and bacon wrapped scallops. <laughs> oh God, that's, and they I forgot just, that about that. And that stays in the movie. I forgot about that. <laughs> he just yells that out and I was like, Fuck, you know what? I like beer and bacon. I also <laughs> like beer and I, I fucking agree with this movie right Maybe now. Maybe we're all on the other side of the Ken Del Vecchio going, <laughs> huh? <laughs> huh? And then Ken Del Vecchio's like, well, how could you do this to, your, to my wife? She's your sister. And she's like, ah, she's my stepsister. And sit up says, sister, stepsister, who cares? I'm like, Heath cares, damn it. Heath cares. <laughs> Heath and the media he can see. I was distracted by the scallops and the beer. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a great moment where Ken Del Vecchio, he's like in his wrestling onesie and you could just see he is visibly out of breath from holding his gut in for so long. It's so <laughs> sad. It's I know I also dress in silly outfits as part of entertainment. Yes, same side coin. But I'm aware. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you realize it's a joke. That though. my side of the coin knows. He's enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> but just when it looks like the bad guys are going to get away with it, Case shows up, the kid, also in a wrestling onesie, and takes down Uncle Ron. And he's supposed to, like, say a line, you know, in, in as part of this, but the kid doesn't realize that he needs to either say it before or after the takedown. Yeah. So he just comes screaming onto set mid-line, <laughs> turning his head this way and that without respect to where the fucking microphone is. God only knows what the fuck he says. And oh, these pretzels are making me thirsty. I will tell you <laughs> what he says because it's the craziest line ever written. What he says is he runs on and hip throws his uncle onto the ground is off to the shadows of a prison cell world. No, so yeah, <laughs> that's actually what? mom's line afterwards. Yes. Yes. Yes, Heath, mom picks up Heath, the gun. Listen to me. Someone wrote <laughs> into the script of this movie off to the shadows of a prison cell world and they kept it. Okay. Is that maybe a reference to uh, Plato and the allegory of the cave? <laughs> <laughs> it could be. I think it might be. That is Ken Del Vecchio getting artsy, damn it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then... Again, audience, I just I have to ask you to trust me on this one. It's free on Amazon, by the way, if you want to check my work. And then an entire team of wrestlers runs into the room out of nowhere and drags the movie nappers away so that they can tie them up, beat the crap out of them and send them to a Congolese prison. <laughs> yep. And in real life, this is just Ken Del Vecchio's shitty, like, dad karate wrist control team, softball, yes. bowling, whatever yep. the fuck. And they're like, we want to be in the thing at the end and have bacon wrap scalps. Would you let us do the arrest? And that's what happened. <laughs> now, what if the arrest took place in your brother's restaurant? No, he won't let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> he got a different judge and he's going to jail for like yeah. 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> Raped all those kids. 
And okay, and then we fall back into the movie inside the movie where we see Agent Del Vecchio, the ableism joke and his sexy translator one more time. They're in Martin Cove's office. Now, as you'll recall, I'm sure, you know, because again, you've, you've been putting the push pins in the yarn into your cork board as you went along. Martin Cove's character is blind, so he doesn't realize they're there and he's singing Yankee Doodle in a way that you wouldn't do if you realized there were other people in the in the room. Okay, but he's actually improvising Yankee Doodle. Yes, in the he's like Yankee Doodle up and down and crosswise and a hell mouth go inside <laughs> the eyes of God and come out a born baby. It's <laughs> nonsense. It's fucking nonsense, and the movie never acknowledges it, and it makes me so sad. <laughs> And then there's like a there's a moment there where like I guess Ken Del Vecchio's character wins the day, but we don't know enough about what the hell is supposed to be happening in this movie for any of that to make sense. Hospital arrest. Yeah. And then elsewhere, we go back to prisoner doctor lady in the hospital where where she gets roped into imaginary emergency surgery on JJ Walker. Mm hmm. They have to shock him back to life. They, they they killed him to find out so that he could figure out if there was a god. Yeah, he he could he couldn't he couldn't figure that out. Yeah, by the way. he doesn't know. So they he's like, take a shot. Not enough information. I'm still agnostic. <laughs> Fuck. All right. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, but that's supposed to be. I was like supposed to be humor. I just again, I feel like I need to point that out, and that resolved something else in a movie that we have too little context to know about hospital arrest. Yeah. And then, yeah, we go back to, to Martin Cove. And in case you're not recognizing him, we then cut to everybody watching the movie with coma Charlie. And they're all doing the, the crane technique. Cause they're like, remember him from this movie from the one with the, huh? the Cobra thing. You know? My wife. <laughs> <laughs> Me esposa. Nope. <laughs> so, so, but this is the big moment, right? Where they finally get to show the movie to coma Charlie and see if it wakes him up. It, it doesn't. It does not. No. Yeah. So everyone leaves the room and, and then like in case starts telling coma Charlie that it turns out his dad is a CIA super agent that single handedly took down an entire communist government and replaced it with a democracy. And then he's like, oh, so can I climb into the bed and start grabbing your bits and pieces? It's wrestling. It's wrestling. And then the kid wakes up. He's like, ah, get off me. Get off. Get, get off. Get <laughs> yes. off me. I'm awake. <laughs> Hooray. I'm awake and you can't wrestle me anymore. Don't turn the camera off. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the kid wakes up and he's like, hey, get off me. That really is the line they give him. <laughs> and then everybody rushes in. The kid looks to the ceiling and says, and I quote, it's a miracle. It's a true Christmas miracle. And then the movie ends and we get no shit. Five more minutes of Ken Del Vecchio's kids wrestling highlights. It's like he was like, you know what? I don't want to keep all this storage space on my hard drive of the kids wrestling highlights. <laughs> what if Amazon <laughs> kept them on there for us? And then whenever we want to watch your wrestling, we could just watch a, a wrestling Christmas miracle. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. So what did we learn, guys? What was the moral of a, a, a wrestling Christmas miracle? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. All right. Well, I guess that's going to do it for our review of a wrestling Christmas miracle, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lure you back in for next year. It'll be next year next time. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. New year, new, same podcast. Yep. So we'll be watching the 1953 monster movie, Robot Monster. That sounds Christian. It's very, <laughs> it's very Christian. I just wanted to do that one. Okay. Sounds fair. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 384 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of our episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Credit, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and Give People Drafts on Mars. All the other music 
music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. After watching this movie, Heath no longer has object permanence. <laughs> and now... <laughs> what? Despite a movie's worth of objection, nobody believes that Ken Del Vecchio was just wrestling that elephant. Eli is very different from Ken Del Vecchio. <laughs> very. I <laughs> went on to be very. He has many attributes that he doesn't share with Ken Del Vecchio. Look around. Can you see him right now from your house? I can see a mirror. I feel like if I took peyote and started dreaming, I would understand this movie and it would make yeah. perfect sense. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We should try that. We should. I was going to say we should do shrooms when you guys are here and watch it again <laughs> and watch this without movie, the yeah. watching part. Let's just. Do yeah. Shrooms. Right. Right. Uh, we Let's should do, do one episode on reward. shrooms. That's what we should do. We should like that. Make a Patreon goal. One episode on mushrooms. Won't be funny, yes. but we'll laugh a lot. But like too much shrooms. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.